you, Mr. Sheehan. You have five minutes, please. Thank you very much for that uh, presentation. Really appreciate it. Um, my first question is around, uh, well, I'm from Sault Ste. Marie, and we have two uh, large First Nations in the area, Garden River, Batchewana, and then we have uh, urban and non-urban uh, indigenous people in Métis. And as part of this government's agenda, of, you know, of rebuilding that relationship with Canada's indigenous people, um, which they're really appreciating, I can tell you that much, I get the positive results, their question to me is, what is there, and they want to do stuff around tourism. What, what exactly does this uh, government have for Aboriginal tourism? So it's actually an exciting time. Keith Henry is the head of ATAC, the Aboriginal Tourism Association of Canada. ATAC is working really closely with Destination Canada. Uh, for the first time, it's a relationship to ensure that we are working hand in hand because we recognize that there are huge opportunities there. Um, in the budget, we budget 2017 provided 8.6 million dollars to the Aboriginal to INAC, um, which will end up being about growing tourism. The tourism vision that we came out with really focuses on marketing access and product, exactly in response to the constructive feedback we were receiving. So we know that there's already considerable success um, because in 2015, Indigenous tourism generated $2.7 billion in gross economic output, $1.4 billion in GDP, which was up from $596 million in 2002, and we're talking about more than $142 million in taxes. So huge business opportunities, an opportunity also to grow uh, communities that have not had that opportunity in the past, once again about inclusive growth. Thank you very much. And uh, my next question is around, uh, I did a lot of work in my former life at the Economic Development Corporation with young entrepreneurs. And, um, you know, perhaps you can make some comments and uh, tell us what is in this budget going forward for young entrepreneurs. We know that 80% of all small businesses go to business in the first three years. Young people are even more challenged. Um, so what opportunities are there? So we've continued funding for Futurepreneur. Futurepreneur has delivered um, great results, and that's why it's a program that really works, connecting the mentorship piece as well as the skills and development. When it comes to Budget 2017, we're talking about skills and development across the board to ensure that Canadians are ready for the jobs of today and tomorrow. Uh, we know that those skills and develop, uh, skills will actually help them in the tourism industry as well. So rather than taking the silo approach, we are taking a whole-of-government approach, a whole-of-Canada approach, uh, bringing the country together. So Futurepreneur is some somewhere um, that's really getting huge potential, skills and development across the country for all generations. And then my part of my mandate is really to look at underrepresented groups, so whether that's um, Indigenous peoples, whether that's women, whether that's youth, um, and then also looking at the regional areas and then what the shortages are there, because we know that Canada is huge land mass wise, um, but we are also quite diverse when it comes to our regions. Okay. Again, going recognizing where I... <laughs> where my riding is, and I think about winter and winter tourism. Uh, we have a ski resort, Search Mount, a uh, number of facilities, snowmobiling, etc. And this is the first time the Search Mount actually was in the black in about a decade. What is there in the budget for winter sports, uh, winter tourism? So Canada's new tourism vision promotes winter tourism through two avenues. Investing in our regionally diverse tourism offerings through our re regional economic development agencies, which support tourism by investing in local tourism businesses, products and experiences, including winter tourism, and promoting our national parks, many of which offer unique winter experiences in winter months, including cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, hiking, and more. So something we're noticing when it even comes to um, the jobs gap shortage is that it's a, quite a season industry mm -hmm. with the potential to actually be year-round. So one of the greatest things that Canada has to offer, unlike any other country, is four distinct seasons. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to showcase those four seasons, and if we can get the country working better together, perhaps the the regions that you know have heavy summer months um, but not heavy winter months, we could share resources and actually be able to create those full-time meaningful jobs that Canadians want and expect. Well, that's very thoughtful, and uh, I have a question about venture capital and access to it. Uh, I don't know how much time I have, but uh, I'll just leave that out there. 